In this video, we'll be going over how the structure of an acid can determine its strength. And in this video, we'll be looking at two types of acids, um, what's called an oxy acid, so acids that have oxygens on them, and then um, halogen acids. So, and the, uh, the concept is a little bit different for, for each type of acid. So first of all, if it's an oxy acid, so if it's an oxy acid, or oxy acid. So let me, a little side note on oxy acids. An oxy acid, acid will have the form H bonded to O bonded to some atom called X, where X can be from 5A, 6A, or 7A. Um, and you could have multiple oxygens connected to the X, actually, after that. So, for example, perchloric acid. Um, has the following formula. So if it's HClO4, its formula is H bonded to an oxygen, a Cl, and then three oxygens like that. Okay, and let me just go over a little concept because this concept will actually help you to understand this. And when you understand it, you won't really have to memorize anything because it's a generalized concept that's going on here. So the reason, and as we know, um, perchloric acid, this is a strong acid. So this is strong, um, whereas we know, and so is HClO3, but HClO2 and HClO1 are weak. Why is that? Well, it's because this has a, a pretty high EN. So chlorine, I believe, is 3 point, uh, I believe chlorine is 3.0. And then all these oxygens are 3.5. And then this is 3.5. So what it does is it draws So what it does is it draws the electrons away from this bond. So these arrows I'm drawing is the the force of the pull, the electrical pull on the electrons away from hydrogen. So the two dots that are here are actually really, really close. They're actually shifted. These two dots over are way shifted over towards this oxygen. So what it does then is it weakens this bond. Um, and then so as we know, strong acids fully dissociate. So this bond fully breaks and then you get 100% dissociation with something like that. So it's a result of the EN. So if you have all these oxygens, let's take a look at this picture again. So if you have all these oxygens, so we have four of them plus another high EN atom here, then you're gonna have all this stuff pulling electrons away from this bond and it weakens it. So um, that's those are the two things we wanna look at. So you look at, So we want to look at the electronegativity of whatever X is. So in this case, it was chlorine. And you also want to look at the number of oxygens attached. on the acid. So for example, if you have H if you're trying to figure out like what's a stronger acid, HBrO3 or HiO3. So the number of oxygens is a tie. They both have 3. So it must be dependent on this other variable, the electronegativity of X. So if we draw the Lewis structure, it helps to explain this a little bit better versus HIO3. This is BRO4. I drew it wrong. There's BRO3. And then um, HIO3. OK, so if we recall, um, EN increases on the periodic table to the right and up. So that's where you have high EN. So in other words, uh, 
uh, bromine is above iodine, so the bromine EN is higher than iodine. Um, so that means this one is going to have a stronger pull on the electrons. This one will pull it, but not as strong. So that means that this one, so the higher EN um, makes the bonded hydrogen weaker. So therefore it dissociates better because of that sh because of that shift in electrons there. So HBrO3 would be the stronger acid. So this is actually a, a 2.8 En. And then if you look up iodine, it's like a 2.5. Um, so as we could summarize this further by saying as um, the En of the atoms involved on an oxy atom of X, then you get a stronger acid then it increases the strength of the acid. Um, I hesitate, don't just memorize that. It's it's really important to it's really important to understand this this concept of why and this this pull on the electrons and what makes a strong acid strong is is this being weak and its level of dissociation. So the this is a very common question on the on the AP exam, like if you get a conceptual question about acids and bases. So um, let's look at another example where, um, so here's another example where X is the same. Example number two. If you have um, HOCl versus H O or H C L O four. So we have hypochlorous versus perchloric acid. Um, so the H O C L will look like that, and then the H C L O four looks like this. So this one is going to have plenty of E N to just pull on all these all these oxygens, the chlorine, it really, really weakens that bond there. Um, whereas this one has some pull, so it's acidic, but it's not nearly as strong as that pull. So the, as the number, so if X is the same, in this case, they're both chlorine, then look at the number of oxygens, and then that should weaken the, the bonding. Okay, so the second type of acid is going to be, this is uh, point number two. If your acid, if the acid is a halogen acid, um, where it has the form um, H, X, so this is a non oxy acid where X is usually a halogen. Um, this is what you should look at. So it's as the radius, the atomic radius of X, as that decreases, then that actually increases the bond strength because the two atoms are closer, so they're. Um, their orbitals need to overlap um, in a in a more in a closer region, so that actually increases the bond strength. And as we just saw, if you increase the H to rest the molecule bond strength, um, that's going to weaken the acid because it's it's not going to be able to dissociate as well. So it increases the bond strength of H to X. So this bond there. Um, and therefore, you get a weaker acid. Um, and vice versa. So if the radius is much bigger, um, then it's going to 
make it a stronger acid. So, so here's an example. And this is, this is exactly why um, HF is a weak acid. It's because the radius of fluorine is really small. So if you have HBr versus HF. So HBr is actually, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four rings. So hydrogen is one ring, and it's got an electron there. And bromine is going to be four rings. So one, two, three, and four. And then where those rings overlap, it's sharing. So this is bromine. And so the distance from the nucleus, so these electrons to the nucleus here, so this is a much bigger distance. This is actually applied to uh, Coulomb's law, so the binding energy is related to uh, some constant times the two charges. W one charge being the nucleus and the other charge being the electron over the radius squared. So if the radius is um, a lot further, this number goes up, so binding energy goes down. Um, ver if you compare that to HF, then we have uh, hydrogen with its one electron and one ring. And then we have fluorine, which only has two rings. So one and two. And so the binding energy is a lot stronger here. So here to here. So the small radius of fluorine. makes a stronger bond. And it won't dissociate like the other uh, halogen acids. All right, so on the next slide, I have uh, some practice questions for you. So look over the notes you just took and um, just go over those and then see if you can answer these questions on the your turn for ranking um, acids based on strength. OK, so you could go, go ahead and pause it if you need to, but I'm going to end the tutorial here.